Hi everyone, welcome to Q&A with Victor Agushila. That's me. Um, I will answer questions that people have about these awesome projects we make, such as this bicycle that can go 125 kilometers per hour, and we're currently building one that will go 145 and break the world record. Um, I will talk about the engineering that goes behind these bikes, some of the physics and the math, and why do we find it to be a very interesting and awesome problem to try and solve. So the first question we usually get is why are our bikes so much faster than the bikes used by professional riders in Tour de France? And uh, the speed differential is quite huge, our bikes are, are twice as fast uh, as those. I will try to answer this fairly general question next. So why are our bikes much faster than the Tour de France bikes used by professional riders? The short answer is aerodynamics. A Tour de France bike loses 90% of the energy of the rider into air drag. We have to understand why they are so bad and how can we do better. Let's say we have this box moving in this direction. It is much easier for aerospace engineers to visualize the box standing still and the air moving around it. That is because usually we work with wind tunnels where the object is stationary and we do move the air around it. And it is also much easier to draw. So instead, we have the air moving around the box. Okay, we have to understand a few things about air. Air has mass and air has viscosity. That means it has inertia, so if we try to accelerate a bit of air into one direction, it will resist that. And air has viscosity, which means that if we have some air moving in one direction and some air moving in the other direction, there will be a friction force here, proportional with the velocity. And the two sides will gradually slow down unless something keeps them moving. How is this relevant to the box? Well, let's see what happens with the air particle. Let's see, we have an air particle right here, which is moving in this direction. Now, an air particle right next to the wall of the box can only move along the wall of the box. It can't move out because that would leave a vacuum and it can't move through the box. So it has to move this way. Now this particle cannot all of a sudden change direction and move around the box at 90 degree angles because air has inertia and this would mean an almost infinite acceleration. That is not physically possible. Okay, so what is air going to do, actually? So what this particle will actually do is curve around the box. Here is not gonna be able to do a 90 degree angle either and have motion like this. A particle right in the middle is going, go, going to go towards the box, but it's not going to be fast enough to move out of the way. That means it's going to slow down and then stop somewhere here. Eventually, this whole region of air in front of the box is going to be stationary. Okay, let's see what happens at the back of the box, which is actually even more important than what happens at the front. So we have a particle traveling in this direction. It is not going to be able to do, again, a 90 degree turn and unite with a particle from this side. This is not physically possible because of the viscosity and the mass of the air particles. Instead, what's going to happen is this particle will move in this direction will try to curve around to the side of the box, but it won't be able to curve fast enough, so it will move like this. Now, these particles next to the box can only move along the wall of the box. They will swirl and be trapped behind the box. This air will move around the box, 
this air in this region will be trapped in all sorts of eddies and vortices and these guys will keep on changing their shape depending on the velocity the, the air is moving at. So now we have air trapped in front of the box and we have a lot of air trapped behind the box that is swirling in all sorts of directions. Why is this bad? This is bad because air has viscosity. That means that the air moving around the box tries to pull the stationary column with it. But it can't do that because that would generate some vacuum right around the box. This column of air that's stationary and tries to be moved because of the stickiness of the air with the outside air generates a force on the, by on the box in this direction. This column of air, which is pushed against the bike, is still stationary, but it's being pushed against the bike, will also generate a force in this direction. Our box eventually, if we don't apply a counter force to it, will start moving with the airstream. Let's see how this blunt object compares with an object we call streamlined. So here we have a streamlined object. Let's see what happens with a particle of air. Now, this particle gets close to the object and now it has to move at a less slope than this particle which would have to turn 90 degrees. So it's able to go right along the side of the object. Now what happens here is this particle of air is gradually accelerated towards the object. The acceleration is a lot more gradual than what would happen at this sharp corner and the particle is able to follow the object most of the way. A streamlined object is one where the particle of air is able to follow the contour very closely. We still have here a small region of air that's stationary with respect to the object as well as a small region right at the front. But the rest of the air travels along the skin of the object instead of having these big stationary regions. So a streamlined object shows no separation.
three times faster, we will have to supply 27 times the power. No matter how hard we may taught train, he was not yet able to become 27 times stronger. That's why he did. So, what can we do about it? Well, let's look at the equation for the force. It contains the density of the air, and that means we can go somewhere where the air has less density, that is higher up. Um, the race we go to is at 3,000 feet altitude. We can also decrease the area, the frontal area of the vehicle. As you can see, we may go rider horizontal, but there is only so much you can do with the body shape. You can't make it as small as you would like. But CD is the factor that tells us how good is our shape at not dragging a lot of air with it. So this shape has a pretty bad CD 